What comes to mind when you think of AJR? Granted, it is probably one of these songs. But another thing that might come to mind is the Great Bummerland Hunt of 2020. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. Okay, so technically it's called hashtag AJR Hunt, but this is my video, so whatever. So recently AJR just put out a new song called The DJ Is Crying For Help. And they put together a little puzzle to go alongside it. Basically, uh, the first 300 people that would find out the Zoom password would be entered into said Zoom, where AJR would answer some questions and premiere the first minute and a half of the music video. And I was one of those people. So after I, like a montage event of figuring out the password, I was in. So, when we get in, all, all we see right now is this. Nothing more, nothing less, and I'm pretty sure it was safe to say everyone in that chat room was confused. But eventually, the boys did make their way in, you know, Adam, Jack, Ryan, and uh, they did their thing. Uh, they premiered the first minute and a half of the video, like they said they would, answered some questions. They named a Wi-Fi router on the spot, and uh, then they bowed out. I'm sorry this is all I can give you, but it was just, it was one of those you had to be there moments. So, I'm really sorry this is all I can give you, but hey, that's just a theory. An AJR theory! Thank you so much for tuning in, I've been the Ink Demon, and welcome to a new era. Peace. So, if you've been following this channel for a little while now, you know that I've uploaded two types of videos under the concert series, Covey and Rare Americans. But today, today, my friends, is the day I tell you about the big one. That's right, baby. I'm talking 97.1, The Eagle Rocks. A moment of silence. So, about two days after my school had gotten out for the summer, 97.1 the Eagle Rocks, was holding, like, this big festival with artists such as Giovanni and the Hired Guns, The Who, wait, no, not, not that Who, yeah, that's the one, and freaking, I kid you not, Papa Roach. Friends, I can officially say I have seen Papa Roach live in concert. Uh, by the way, if the name Papa Roach doesn't sound familiar, they made that song Last Resort. So, naturally, the concert did end up going great. Uh, but here's where I gotta get on a serious note with everyone. So, most of the venues I've been to in the past have, like, been indoors and have had air conditioning. But for this, we had to actually be outside. And living in Texas, it can get scalding. Which means, like, reasonably, I was miserable that whole day because it got up to, like, a hundred and something degrees. But I'm pretty sure me saying that just offended the entire state of Texas. So I'm sorry, my yeehaw brethren. But as said, the concert did go well. Uh, but I did not get to meet anybody, surprisingly. But I would like to share some life advice about trying liquid death. Kids, take it from a stranger on the internet. This crap is nasty. Don't drink it. It it may just be water, but like, it it's, I don't know, it's weird. It doesn't taste right. Don't drink it. Also, parents, don't freak out. It's not beer or alcohol or any of those substances. It's water. So, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Devil, do you have something you want to share? Oh, nothing, Ink Demon. It's just that I do believe I've won. <sighs> and that's another win for the devil. For the fifth century in a row. What? That's completely bullcrap. He always hides his cards under the table. Fine, you know what? Devil, just pick who you're going to make a fool out of already. Okay, then how about you? <sighs> Alright, so exactly what are school drills? Well, school drills are essentially a French word for how to not act like a stupid mouth breather idiot in a situation. So today we'll be covering what I like to call the ropes, which are essentially tornadoes, armed intruders, and earthquakes, starting with tornadoes. 
Now, I'm going to be using a system I like to call perks, or people in really crappy situations. So, here are the most common steps for a tornado. Step number one, stay calm. Step two, get to somewhere safe. Step three, stock up on supplies and wait it out. So, about step one also, it's perfectly okay to panic. But just don't panic too much, you know? Now, here's what not to do in a tornado, or what schools want you to do. Lie on the ground, cover the back of your head, and just kneel. Because, dude, you look stupid. Can you imagine what schools are thinking? Like, do they seriously think a tornado is just going to come in, look, looking for kids who aren't doing this, then find none, and just leave? That is completely ridiculous. Next up on the ropes is armed intruders. Now, normally, like... A, like, what a normal person would do is get somewhere safe, somewhere far away from the intruder, and call, like, trusted people, like authorities and such. But schools want you to, say with me, everyone, go in the corner! Ma'am, that is a corner! What's it gonna do? Give us the second coming of Jesus? Nah, we're moving on. Lastly, the, the last part of the ropes I want to talk about is earthquakes. I don't actually have a joke prepared for this one. I'm so sorry. I'm, but I we're actually like this was probably gonna be like a really short one, anyways. So, um, thank you everyone so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next thing we do. Peace. All right, there you go, devil. I did your video. Now what do you want? Your bow tie. Okay, that is it. Get over here. <clears throat> Ink team and video Ink team and video It's a song about the Ink team and video The DJ is crying for help Thank you, Wade. <laughs> hey, man. Didn't you used to have arm spikes? Oh, yeah, I did. Just sometimes I forget to put them on, but I'll tell you this. It's a triple whammy today. It's Christmas Day. It's the last video of 2022, and it just so happens to be pon Concerts Part 4, which means today we'll be tackling 96 Bitter Beings. Okay, uh, first of all, what do y'all think of the new studio? I absolutely love it so far. Uh, do you love it, or do you hate it? Let me know in the comments. But, 96 Bitter Beings was a side project started by this guy, Dare Miller, after he left the band CKY, which is actually an abbreviation of... Um... Uh... <laughs> Camp Kittens Yogurt. <laughs> Let's get moving. So, the previous four, con three concert episodes, I've known about ahead of time, you know, like Kobe, Brand Americans, and 97.1, The Eagle Rocks. 96 Bitter Beings just showed up! But it was like one of those times that, like, you're glad it showed up uninvited, uh, because you love it so much. But anyways, here are some of the highlights from that concert. So, the opener, Howling Giant, was absolutely amazing. They killed it. They had all the knobs cranked up to max. And I talked with the bass player about freaking hot sauce after their set. But this isn't a video about them. This is a video about 96 Better Beings. They did a great show. And boy howdy, do I have a story to tell for you. So, a couple days before our set, the bass player for the band came in, did sound check, and then left to get a cab to go back to Los Angeles. Amazing! And if you're wondering... Yeah, Darren Miller called the guy out, and he got fired. Y'all, we freaking made it. As of today, December 25th, 2022, we are just six days away from ending 2022 and stepping into 2023. So I want to share some of my 2022 highlights with you all. COVID hit me like a freight train. I saw a rare Americans live for the first time. Your favorite Martian came back. And lastly, we said a farewell to kings and stepped into a new era. Y'all, thank you so much for making this such a great year. Let's hope 2023 is way better and just it tops this year perfectly. 
I've been the Ink Demon. I'm going to take a break for a little while to, you know, kind of rest up and get some more motivation and ideas for videos. And don't worry, we'll be back within the first few weeks of 2023. So, thank you all so much for watching. I've been the Ink Demon, and we'll see you in the new year. Goodbye. Alright, I'm just going to give you all a really blunt intro. Five Nights at Freddy's is great. Like, I don't think I've met a single human being on this planet who does not like Five Nights at Freddy's. So, no, the title or nor the thumbnail are deceiving you. Five Nights at Freddy's is getting a movie. So, today I'm here to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's Bad Cupcake. So, I'll be dividing this video into three categories, or pizza toppings. History, production junk, and next up forever. Uh, so, yeah, y'all are in for a short one, but also a long one. So, let's take all of this back to April 2015, when Gil Keenan, Scott Coffin, and Warner Brothers Pictures teamed up to make a screenplay for Five Nights at Freddy's. And, at this point in the story, Gil Keenan is tweeting some major ominous things. Don't call yourself an original Five Nights at Freddy's fan if you don't remember this picture. And then, Scott Cawthon said, Alright, so you see this? I'm taking it. And I'm dipping. And all the rights went over to Blumhouse with freaking Chris Columbus as the director. You know Chris Columbus, right? Like, as in, the Chris Columbus who directed Home Alone. Yeah, this was about to be a good movie. But then we take this to November of 2020. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. But then Scott, uh, in that part of the year, Scott Coffin made a Reddit post saying that the Mike screenplay was finished and that filming would begin in spring of 2021. But then nothing. We heard nothing from nobody. Not even Scott, because I'm pretty sure we all know what had happened in this summer of 2021. So we were all kind of left alone in the dark. And you know the Mike screenplay? Turns out that was scrapped, and I didn't even know that until I was working on this video. So we were kind of just left to assume. So we got further developments in the years. But then last year rolled around. Gil, uh, not Gil Keenan, Jason Blum started acting really ominous, tweeting really ominous stuff about Five Nights at Freddy's, and if you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, you would know, oh, frick, something is about to happen, and something happened indeed. We got a working title, a suspected budget, a director, a f like filming dates, Jim Henson's creature shop on the film, and lastly, our first look at some of the cast of this movie. Oh yeah, we were in for a long time, but... Well, not a long time, but... We were in for a fun time. But, my friends, this is where the question comes in. What is going to be next up forever? And, if I'm being completely, totally honest with y'all, I don't know. Like, we don't have a lot of details on this movie, so... Normally, if we did, I would give y'all, like, a funny remark, like, we'll see, or I'd leave you, all, leave you all on a cliffhanger. But, this is the first time in one of these where we have little to no details, so... I cannot give you a fair, like, reasonable explanation. An explanation. And, that's what scares me, is because we don't know if this movie, like... Based on what details we have, and the budget, $30 million, that's not a whole lot. But, I don't think I should be worried, because Scott Coffin, despite retiring, is indeed working on this movie, and Emma Tammy said they're not throwing back, they're not holding any punches, they're not holding, they're not pulling any punches, they're sticking straight to the storyline, and if what I said hasn't convinced you, here's what Jason Blum had to say on the movie. With Emma Tammy at the helm, we're committed to making Scott's vision of the movie come to life, rest assured. It will be, and it is worth the wait. My friends, I think this is it. I think we're finally getting the movie we've been waiting for for so long. And I think we're next up forever. I can't wait to see what you, what y'all at Blumhouse do next. I've been the Ink Demon, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and also, if he does get casted, we all know who would totally play Freddy.
No way. Ah, dinosaur. Are they still relevant? No, like, seriously, are they still making music? Well, I mean, I'm making this video, so that would be a yes. But in case you've been living under a rock, De La Soul is an American hip hop trio formed in 1988 in Amityville, Long Island, New York. They are best known for their sampling, their quirky lyrics, and their contributions to the evolution of the jazz rap and alternative hip hop subgenres. Or that—that's what Wikipedia says, anyways. If, if any of that didn't interest you, their song "The Magic Number" was in Spider-Man: No Way Home. But this isn't a video about Tom Holland and the lads, no. This is about Potsinus and the lads. So how did this all begin? Let's go all the way back in time to 1988. As mentioned before, in Long Island, New York, members Poss, Trugoy, and Maceo band together to create music. A year later, on March 3rd, 1989, they released their debut album, Three Feet High and Rising, via Tommy Boy Records. I apologize for starting on the 89, I have no idea why. But here was the problem. Tommy Boy wouldn't allow the band to release their music onto streaming. This caused a lot of debate and debacle. Some people think it was the samples, but no, it, w it was indeed Tommy Boy. Eventually, in 2019, De La Soul said, That's it, we've had enough, and left Tommy Boy Records to sign with AOI. And then, we got the news on January 5th, 2023. De La Soul announced they would f that their first six albums would finally be released to streaming, and released The Magic Number as a single on January 12, 2023. As of the day this video is released, hopefully February 5th, the albums will be released on March 3rd, 2023. I can't believe I'm saying that, but the day has finally come. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Good day to you all. Huh? Oh, am I, uh, am I in your way? Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll move. I'm, I was just playing on something. Well, here it is. Man, I still wonder how they leaked all the tracks so early. Dude, Fall Out Boy has a new record coming out. Man, I miss that part of the island. Whatever, let's just get this to check out already. Hello, sir. Did you find everything okay today? Yeah, I, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm just here to purchase this final. All right, let me see if I can get sprung up for you. <laughs> the answers are all inside of this. I've heard better albums come out of my Jumping into it immediately, so much for Stardust is the 8th studio album by Chicago-based band Fall Out Boy. If you can't tell, I'm really excited that I finally get to share this record because I absolutely love it with all my heart. So, in this video, I'll be taking you through every song on the record, and then after that, I'm going to rank each one off of my personal favorites from worst to best. Without further ado... Let's go ahead and get started with Love From The Other Side. Oh man, this was a great track to come back with. And honestly, I feel like it's probably one of their best tracks ever, like, in the recent years. Uh, it's got a little bit of Fully Ado and Mania, two of their previous albums, with uh, a larger influence on Fully Ado. Which gives this track an almost, like, it, it gives it a perfect score 
of 8.5 out of 13. Heartbreak feels so good. This one also had a big influence of Foley and Mania, with a larger influence on Mania this time around. Still, that doesn't mean I don't like this track. It's one of my favorites from the album. I like it a lot more than uh, Love, but I don't know. They're both great tracks to me. 9 out of 13. Hold me like a grudge. This one was honestly, like, I don't know. This one was perfect, like, in terms of video-wise, because it completes a trilogy. Dance, dance, this ain't a scene, it's an arms race, and obviously, you know, hold me like a grudge. Great track, I absolutely still love it to this day. Uh, 10 out of 13. Fake Out. Mmm! Oh, this is a great track! This might be the best track off the album, even. I get everyone has their favorites, like, Oh, I really like So Good Right Now, or, Oh, I really like The Pink Seashell. Actually, wait, that last one's a lie. Nobody likes The Pink Seashell. 13 out of 13, no discussions at all. Moving on. Heaven, Iowa. This one was so close to being a perfect track, it really was, because on my original Google Doc that I had all the rankings for, I rated it a, tw I rated it a 12 out of 13. Doesn't mean, like, I obviously, I still like this track. It, it might, it was, uh, I originally ranked it like a number two, like the number two spot. So it got second place on the Google Doc rankings. So good right now. I, I kind of realized, like, listening to this song, this is their most dark, like, album yet, lyric wise. But it could be due to the fact that this album, in my opinion, lyric wise, borrows from two of their previous albums Save Rock and Roll and uh, American Beauty, American Psycho. But honestly, those are two of my favorite records by them because they contain two of my favorite songs by them. Uh, Alone Together and Uma Thurman. Perfect track, uh, like almost perfect. 12.5 out of 13. The Pink Seashell. It, it's literally just a clip from Reality Bites, like a movie featuring Ethan Hawke with uh, soulful guitars. In fact, I didn't even bother to do the correct ranking. I don't like it that much. 5 out of 10. Moving on. I Am My Own Muse. This one honestly got me really good. Like, this one was... This caught me off guard. In fact, uh, it's the drummer for the band, Andy's favorite song on the album, which I can see why Andy likes it. It's got those big open drums. I like it. 13 out of 13. Flu Game. This one kind of gives me, like, 1930s swing vibes mixed with the classic Fall Out Boy sound we all know. 9 out of 13. Perfect. Almost perfect, you know what I mean. Baby Annihilation. Pete's Broken Poetry, it's... Uh, chef's Kiss, I absolutely love it. 13... Uh, uh, dang it. 13 out of 13. I didn't realize there was another uh, slide there. My bad. The Kintsugi Kid. 10 years. This one... Mm, I'm sorry, but I didn't really like this one. To I'm, I'm sorry to all my uh, Kintsugi Kid fans out there. But this one wasn't really my favorite off the uh, one of my favorites off the album, but doesn't because it felt like it felt too much like heartbreak feels so good. That's the that was my main problem with it. But still, I give it a decent eight point five out of thirteen. What a time to be alive! Ready for this? Boom! <laughs> Surprise to see me again, aren't ya? Check this out. I even brought back the Arrow One design, mainly because I feel like this song off the album channels how a lot of content creators and just everyone in general was feeling during the pandemic, which it perfectly captures how I was feeling. 13 out of 13 seashells. I absolutely love it. Alright, I'm sorry for trying to make my voice sound younger. Uh, that's the whole reason why I brought back Arrow 1. So much for Stardust. 13 out of 13. See how I gave it the ranking almost immediately? That just shows it's a great track. Overall and rankings. With a runtime of 44 minutes and 20 seconds, so much for Stardust got a uh, an overall ranking of 128.3 out of 169. I'll give last place to The Pink Seashell and first place to Fake Out, I Am My Own Muse, Baby Annihilation, What a Time to Be Alive, and the title track. And that's about it. So Much for Stardust is the 8th studio album by Fall Out Boy, released on March 24th, 2023. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next thing we do. Peace! <clears throat>
We didn't start the fire. Bonus track. Uh, eh, I, I don't know, it's, this feels like a classic reintroduction to the original song of the actual We Didn't Start the Fire from Billy Joel, but, um, in more of a, uh, in more of an updated version, uh, with events from the last, I believe, what, uh, like what Fall Out Boy said, past 28 years or so, I, I couldn't be fully sure, but, that's what I, I believe they said. They I believe that it was said to be the past 28 years or so. I don't know. You'll probably see it on screen in like 5 seconds how many years it's been. I don't know. 7 out of 10. And with that, as of October 2023, with a runtime of now 47 minutes and 56 seconds, we, Fall Out Boy's So Much For Stardust gets a total of 153.3 out of 196. In case you've been living on a rock and you didn't know, the Foo Fighters are a band that was formed by Nirvana drummer and frontman Dave Grohl and have so far put out 11 studio albums. Uh, and today we'll be talking about the main recent two, Medicine at Midnight and But Here We Are. You already know the drill if you saw my So Much for Stardust video, uh, but in case you don't know, I'm going to be ranking each track based on how much I like them or how much I don't like them using the album's track listing. So, for example, Medicine at Midnight has nine songs, so it could get like a nine out of nine or so. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with Making a Fire. <laughs> huh? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Making a Fire is the opening track to Medicine at Midnight and has a very upbeat drum track and is very danceable to me, like in my opinion. Which is why I like it so much. I, that's why I decided it deserves a 9 out of 9. Shame, shame. I love shame, shame because it has a 9 out of 9. Because it's got such an upbeat drum. Like, it's got a looping drum track throughout the entire song. And it's very simple too. So it's great. Like, it's a great song for any beginner. And if, if you don't believe me, just listen to my secretary. Tell him, secretary. Cloud Spotter. Cloud Spotter, I was I'm a really big fan of like the instrumental to the song because of how unique it is from every other song on the album. But I'm not a big fan of the lyrics, which is why unfortunately I had to give it its review of a 6.7 out of 9. Waiting on a War. <laughs> this this Waiting on a War is this album's fake out, and it's fitting too cuz they're both the fourth track on their respective their respective albums. And, but it's perfect. It's an acoustic ballad, which at the end features this big rock like ending, and it's it's beautiful. It's it's in my opinion one of the best tracks I've heard in a while. Nine out of nine. Medicine at midnight. Uh, so a little bit of insight before we get into uh, this next one. Um, right before medicine, like I'm not sure entirely if it was. Like, before or after the release of Medicine at Midnight, that the Foo Fighters, um, yeah, there, there's Medicine at Midnight, uh, but the Foo Fighters decided that they would form the, the Bee Gees band, their tribute band, <laughs> well, I mean, if you can call it a tribute band, it's literally just them, um, the Dee Gees, and released Hail Satin on July 19th. 2021 and it shows in this track the disco parts of the the DGs which is why I I don't know I I love this track because of its disco it makes it makes for a perfect track it's unique and I I don't understand why at times I've seen people not really like this album a lot I I love it a lot but still I'm getting off track 9 out of 9 No son of mine no, it's not a mind just awake something in me. It makes me want to drive a mail truck through the front door of a CVS and then drink all the Pepto-Bismol. 8 out of 9, Wood Sun again. Holding Poison. Holding Poison, I'm actually really sad because I love this track so much, but it has never been played live before, which is really a shame because this song needs to be played live. It feels like a Foo Fighters concert in a song. So, boom, it it would make much sense to have this song played live. It's like I Don't Care from, you know, Foley Do, Fall Out Boy. It's a beautiful track. 9 out of 9. Please play this live, Foos. Uh, by the way, I meant to say, uh, this was actually used as the trailer music in the Foos, uh, the Foo Fighters horror movie, Studio 666. Yeah, you heard that right. A Foo Fighters horror movie.
Chasing Birds. Chasing Birds feels like a pretty relaxing day track. It's almost like a lullaby, which gives it a 9 out of 9 automatically. Love Dies Young. 9 out of 9, it's the perfect closing track, and it's uh, it's got a very, like, throughout the song, it's got like a chugging of a, of a guitar string throughout the whole song. It's like a... <laughs> if, if you get my meaning. But, anyways... And with that, with a runtime of 36 minutes and 35 seconds, overall, Foo Fighters Medicine at Midnight gets a total of 77.6 out of 81. So, that's it, right? That's the review. You know, the videos should be done, right? That I pro <laughs> That's probably not what you're saying, but... Yeah, normally, normally right here is where I would end the video, just being like, well, that's it for now, see y'all next time. But, unfortunately... I can't say that for this one. On the morning of March 25th, 2022, the drummer for the band, Taylor Hawkins, was found dead at 50. And then that kind of left the future of the band for an uncertain... uncertainty. <laughs> it's it's kind of an uncertain uncertainty. I, I, I don't know, words. Anyways, the Foos went back home, held some tribute concerts in honor of Taylor, and then they went kind of radio silent, almost. I mean, obviously, you know, Dave and Greg Kirsten, the producer of, you know, the three most recent Foo albums, did their uh, Christmas sessions of 2022, um, but not a whole lot of music was released until April. Rescued is the first track off But Here We Are, the, the first Foo Fighters album in two years. Well, I mean, I suppose. Why, why am I saying it like I'm so confused? I know it was two years ago that they released making, not making a fire, medicine at midnight. Bah, nine out of nine, ten out of ten. Yeah. Under you. This is a great track. It, it resembles how someone feels during loss and how they think, oh, I'm, I'm getting over this, but in reality, the lyrics state there's no getting over it. Ten out of ten. Hearing voices. Hearing Voices kind of reminds me of the Weezer track, What Happens After You, from their Seasons Autumn album, which is one of my favorite tracks. 7 out of 10. But here we are. But here we are feels more like an anthem than any track I've heard. It's one of my favorite tracks on this entire album, and I think it deserves a well good score. Hey, can you bring that over here, please? Alright, that's way better. Anyways, like I was saying, But Here We Are is almost like the anthem of this album, and it's the title track too, which is fitting. <laughs> There's got like a, like a really weird clanking sound throughout the whole song that I'm so interested in, and I love it so much. So, ten, 9 out of 10. The Glass. 10 out of 10. This is just a heartbreaking yet beautiful song. And actually, I can't get through the song without crying. It, it's so sad. Dave Grohl the, is one of the first people I think has ever made me cry via song. So, nice job, Dave. Nothing at all. Josh Fries, the current drummer for the Foos, absolutely nails this song live on the drums. Which is why it's one of my favorites. It's got a great drum beat. It's essentially this album's making a fire. N ten, 9 out of 10. Show me how. This song features a cameo from Dave's daughter, Violet Grohl, and... Um, it's perfect. It's a duality of both their voices, both young and old. It's just, it's a beautiful track, vocal-wise and lyric, lyric-wise and instrumental-wise too. Cause the drums echo and it gives it just a ten out of ten. Beautiful. Beyond me. This one reminds me of the Glass because of how similar they feel in vibe, which is honestly not a bad thing at all. In fact, it's a great thing because. I love both tracks. Not 10 out of 10. The Teacher. I gotta admit, I wasn't really, like, I thought I had, I had big expectations for this track. I thought, oh, it's gonna be like this big track, like a, like a ballad almost. But unfortunately, that was just not the case here. 5 out of 10. Rest. Rest is, Rest shows that it's the end of an era for the Foo Fighters. You know, it shows, like, in the lyrics that it's recorded so weird it's it's recorded almost 
acoustically, and then it goes into like a professional studio recording from from what I can remember of this album. It had I don't I don't remember fully, but I can tell you this: it's a beautiful track, and it symbolizes the end of an era. Ten out of ten. And with that, with a total runtime of 48 minutes and 14 seconds, but here we are, get the total of 90 out of 100. What? This is a perfect album. Like, this is a, almost a perfect album, and it shows. It shows via its, its, like, its amazing melodies. It shows in its, like, lyrics. It shows in every part. So, honestly, good job, Foo Fighters. Y'all have done a great deed for the world. Now then, as of the day this video is going out, June 28th, 2023, today is my date of So Much for Tour Dust, which means uh, Contras Part 5 is soon, y'all. This is truly, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, what's going to happen, I can't really tell you. Only the future will tell. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you in Contras Part 5. Thank you, and good night. Bazinga. So hey, uh, I know it's been a minute, but really quickly, I did want to talk about something. Uh, I know last episode, I said it was, like, the last time I did one of these, I said it was going to be the last episode. And by the last time I did one of these, I mean Contras Part 4, 96 Bitter Beings. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like I said, I said it was gonna be the last one, but in my defense, nobody could have seen Love from the Other Side coming, so it was a bit of a shock when Fall Out Boy announced they were coming back, uh, like, you know, for a whole album and a world tour, but anyways, just wanted to clar uh, clarify that real quickly, uh, now let's get into the video, so yeah, story time. Uh, so, a little bit of a fun fact, uh, this was one of the first times where I brought my friends along to the concert, and this actually started on, I believe, Valentine's Day, uh, where I gave them this little, like, box, uh, I called it the Smile Frown Box, and it had in it a pink seashell, theming, you gotta keep the theme, four little smile frowns, a red, uh, guitar pick, and a little note, and I think the note read something along the lines of, Will you see Fall Out Boy with me? Uh, come June 28th, we're on our way to the show together. Uh, and by the way, I know I draw myself, like, uh, or, uh, depict myself as the tall one, but actually it's more like this. Uh, there we go, I forgot there was a second slide there. But yeah, it's more like this instead of me being tall. But anyways, well, unfortunately we did miss the two openers before Bring Me the Horizon and Fall Out Boy. Um, so sorry, y'all, but eventually we did make it to the pavilion, or the Dos Equis pavilion. But we didn't have these seats. We were right where we normally were in Concerts Part 3. Anyways, some merch getting later, we were completely decked out, and we were ready to go for that and set. Uh, I got a hat, a t-shirt, and the sweet wall tapestry, while my best friend got a, uh, jersey. I wanted to get a, a tote bag, but they were all sold out, so Pete Wentz owes me a tote bag. And, uh, some 8-balls, too. Yeah. Uh, anywho, onto the serious stuff for the second, or for a second. <laughs> so, as of the day this video is going out, August 15th, 2023, semesters start back up for me, uh, tomorrow, which means videos are gonna be slowing down. Again. But don't worry, though, we'll still upload, just not so much. Uh, well, I mean, we didn't really upload a lot this summer, so uh, I can't imagine it's going to, I can imagine it's probably still going to be the same, but yeah, it's still going to be, you know, a somewhat upload schedule. Uh, I think winter 2023 will be our best bet for, like, the most videos we upload this year. But anyways, back to, uh, back to the concert. So, like I said about the 8-Ball, what's up with that? Well, the 8-Ball for our set was uh, the Afterlife of the Party from Infinity on High. 
And speaking of the Magic 8 Ball, let me talk about that real quickly. So the Magic 8 Ball is a medieval torture method. I, I mean, a fun way to decide what hits get played and what new ones get debuted. And they've debuted a lot of tracks on this tour, like for example, Bang the Doldrums, which I'm still salty about. She's My Winona, which they've already played before, but, you know, nice to have it back on the set list for a little bit. Bob Dylan, which is uh, probably one of their most recent uh, debuts, because I'm actually recording this on the last day of the U.S. tour, August 6th. So last night, they debuted Bob Dylan. And, uh, you know, if you name it, they played it, and I missed it. Anyways, I think uh, one of my favorite parts of the, like, Bring Me the Horizon set was I got to hear my favorite song from them live, Lost. But anyways, that's going to do it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I don't know what the next video is going to be. It'll almost definitely, definitely be B, uh, BFT6, uh, BFTC6, because I've been working really hard on it, and I think, you know, the experience I've created, you're going to enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. What was, in your opinion, the most difficult part of creating this episode? A lot of grief and heartbreak went into this one. This this was a personal period for me. I lost friends, I lost grandparents, I lost pets. And this in this episode is kind of my way of saying I'm angry at the world and this is my way of showing it. This will probably go down as one of the oddest time periods in our lives. This episode is kind of like parting ways with your past and starting a new, like, for example, I get kidnapped, flashlight returns, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I literally cannot say, otherwise the entire episode is spoiled and ruined. It's, it's fun, man. Like, I feel like this episode's probably going to show the most, like, work and development we've shown in years. Everybody gets screen time, and that is what makes this episode, like, the episode. I can't really say for certain that this is going to go down as an object show, like, stepping stone in history, but there's definitely going to be some twists and turns yeah, you won't see coming. Oh, allow me to be the first to get the elephant out of the room. Happy Halloween. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the topic of today's video, Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie. And, uh... I would like to say this though, the first video that I made about this was nearly at the start of the year, January 1st, 2023, so I kind of feel like it's time for a, uh, a refresher. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, that is greatly like talked about with the movie is Matt Pat. and if you're wondering, yes, he does have a cameo as a diner waiter at Sparky's Diner named Ness, which honestly is a yikes for me because they're still throwing punches at him for that. Um, and another thing, speaking of Sparky, Sparky the dog is officially canon, which is tremendous fan service in my opinion. But honestly, like, you know, all this cool stuff aside, I want to talk about the main thing that the title asks. Is the Five Nights at Freddy's movie worth the wait? And in my opinion, absolutely yes. If you're a fan of the games, like myself, this is definitely a must-see movie. But, uh, but I don't know. I want to know, uh, yeah, it's a, it's more than one timer, for, in my opinion. It's a more than one timer. But I don't know. I want to know what you think. Tell me below. And uh, here's one for all the parents out there. Uh, Matthew Lillard, a.k.a. William Afton, does the stew knife clean from the Scream franchise. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, also... Uh, also, a realization that I came to recently, the movie takes place in 2000, which means that Slipknot's self-titled album and technically Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat, if you're a nerd, are all canon to the Freddy Fazbear Cinematic Universe. So, if they do make a sequel and it does not have a 20-minute scene of Freddy Fazbear singing Wait and Bleed on repeat for 9 hours, I'm not gonna go see this movie. But, I don't know. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you in the next thing we do. Goodbye. Love them or hate them, you cannot deny that they've had some great success over the years. With chart-topping singles, five amazing studio albums. I mean, heck, they even helped kick off this era. So, I figured, you know, what better way to celebrate Arrow 2 
than to talk about their latest studio album, The Maybe Man. In case you've seen my other uh, album reviews, you probably know how this is going to go down. But in case you don't, let's say an album has six tracks. And if we times it by the exact number, we can get a total of, like, for example, 9 out of 36. Alright, you got that? Good. Let's go ahead and get into it with Maybe Man. This is one of the first songs teased um, from the whole album, and it still holds up today as one of my favorites. Especially with the 1-2 Pandemonium beat drop. Just, that gets me every time. 13 out of 13. Touchy Feely Fool. This is also one of my favorite songs from the whole album because of just the instrumentals reminding me so much of Bummerland from their previous studio album. I don't know why they remind me so much of Bummerland, but I mean, I don't care. I'm not complaining. I like Bummerland, so 10 out of 13. Yes, I'm a Mess. Yes, I'm a Mess has one of my favorite music videos they've ever made as a band in general. It has Jack Met, their singer, dressing up as an Elmo and going around Times Square to essentially take photos of uh, of tourists, or with tourists. I, I mean, I, you know what I mean. Uh, 10 out of 13. The Dumb Song. The Dumb Song is one of my favorites from, like, the whole entire album, and it's also my favorite of the singles, and has my favorite cover art of any AJR single. 13 out of 13. Inertia. All I can say is just, wow. This is possibly one of the best songs of the whole album, and I get the feeling that at live shows, it's probably going to become the world's smallest violin of the whole album. 13 out of 13. Turning Out Part 3. I absolutely adore the first two Turning Outs, so Turning Out Part 3 was a pretty nice collection to the whole entire, you know, little trilogy. 13 out of 13. Hole in the Bottom of My Brain. Eh, I I don't know about I don't know about this one. I I like it, and, but at the same time I don't like it. It's I don't know. It, it's complicated to say. Uh, Six point five out of thirteen. The DJ is crying for help. I talked about this a little in the start of the video, but in case you didn't know, I was one of the first people to hear this song. And if you don't believe me, go check out the Era Two playlist and watch the first video that talks about the DJ is crying for help Zoom call, which is where I was able to hear the song. And this is still one of my favorites from the whole album because of how unique it is, in my opinion, from every other song. Especially, uh, there's a video talking about the production of DJ's Crying for Help where they have like a horse running and such. I don't know, the production is absolutely stunning. 13 out of 13. I Won't. I Won't to me is kind of the no son of mine or love from the other side of this whole entire album. It is probably going to become a setless staple, uh, along with the next song, Steve's Going to London. But I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, it's, But yeah, like I was saying, this feels like one of the setless staples for the Maybe Man tour that they're going to do. Uh, thir 9 out of 13, I love this song. Steve's Going to London. I like to recreate tracks a lot on GarageBand in my free time. And so far, Steve's Going to London has been one of my favorites to recreate because of how... You know, amazing it is, and I feel like um, every like you know on AJR's tours they do this like making of, and I feel like Steve's going to London is probably going to become the uh, the making of for this tour. Uh, thirteen out of thirteen. Twenty eighty five. Thirteen out of thirteen. This is one of my favorite title tracks ever. It's up there with the "But Here We Are" title track, or or ending, like, songs. It's up there with Rest from But Here We Are, the But Here We Are title track, and the So Much For Stardust title track. And also, this song helps prove one of my theories that I've had for a little while now, uh, like, before the album even came out, and it's that Maybe Man is a loop. Yeah, you heard that right. One of the, la the last line of the entire album is from or is from 28.5, and it's for two or three minutes, then I'm gone. Which is a line from Maybe Man, which is one of the first lines. And like I said, since it's a line from Maybe Man, one of the first lines of that entire song is for two or three minutes, then I'm gone. Maybe Man is a loop. Overall and final thoughts. With a total runtime of 
wait a minute, that was only 12 songs. Where's song 13? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, let me get into that. So, technically song 13 is not out yet. And it probably won't be for a little while now because uh, Ryan Met and Jack Met have both confirmed in a live stream that they plan to release the song 13, uh, the, the 13 song, the <laughs> as a separate uh, standalone single after the Maybe Man's release. So, yeah, I'm not lazy, it's just not out yet. Alright, carry on. Alright, and with a runtime of 44 minutes and 12 seconds, their shortest studio album to date, the Maybe Man gets a total of 126 and a half out of 169, with the best songs going to Inertia, God is Really Real, The Dumb Song, 2085, Steve's Going to London, and The DJ's Crying for Help. Thank you so much for watching. I have one more video planned for this entire year, then that's it for me. So thank you, and we'll see you then. Good night. Now press repeat. I'm in love again. Gotta love her. I'm in love again. She's a lover. I'm in love again. Gotta love her. Huh? Uh, come in. Oh, hey, ice cream. So, uh, what's up, man? What do you need? Well, you got that notepad there. What, uh, what's that say? We need to make a video to promote the holiday mix. Alright, uh, couldn't you have just told me that instead of writing it on that notepad? I may have underwent a small vocal cord surgery. Alright, give me a minute. Hey you, my name is the Ink Demon, and I'm here to promote the return of the Ink Demon's Holiday Mix, which, uh, if you weren't following, I had this mix out last year for the winter season, but then I removed it whenever the winter season came to a close. So I decided, you know what, let's make this a yearly thing, and thus, the Ink Demon's Holiday Mix is back. I've updated the playlist, so that way it kept some of these original songs from last year, but instead this time I also updated it, so that way it has some songs that kind of fit the current mood of recent playlists, like the Maybe Mix, or the Late Night Out with Friends Mix, uh, stuff like that. It also some mixes that I have in mind right now, so uh, you'll have to stick around it for those in 2024. But uh, act quick, because this mix is only going to be available from today, December 21st, to January 25th, 2024. So don't wait. Listen while you can. And with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and head out. So thank you. Hope you have a great night, and I'll see you on Christmas. Good night. We made it. As of today, December 30th, 2023, we are just... A day away from finally ending this year, thank goodness. And I gotta admit, this year was pretty difficult. I'm very happy that we're almost done, so, uh, so yeah, I'm very excited, if you could not tell. But I wanted to talk about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while now. Uh, if you paid attention to the community posts, you would know uh, that around October or so, I believe, uh, around the time that the video I made on Blue Ridge Rock Festival um, came out, uh, I announced a project that I am f that I am very excited to be working on, and that is a movie uh, based on my series, Battle for the Crown, called Battle for the Crown Purity. And I would like to, I'm very, very excited to finally be working on this movie for a multitude of reasons. It's... Uh, one of my favorite projects I've ever done, script-wise, because it's been so much fun to write. And I'd actually like to give a little, uh, little talk about, a little plot of what the movie is about. So, this movie takes place, like, about a week or so after the events of Curtain Call, the final Battle for the Crown episode. And Cartoon Cat, well, he's... he's a little salty. So, he unleashes this creature-type thing called Purity... It's like a Frankenstein, and unfortunately, I cannot show the design right now, but, uh, you know, keep an eye on the community posts. You never know what's going to come out. And it's up to these four, not these four, these five doofuses, Ink Demon, Flashlight, Antenna, Axe, and Ice Cream, and maybe some guests along the way, to try and stop Cartoon Cat and Purity to save the world one last time. And here's some things you can expect from this movie, because... Um, it's very, very packed full of stuff, but 
these are some of my favorites. Uh, it's a fully brand new episode, pretty much. It's like the Bob's Burgers and Aqua Teen movies. Just a longer extended episode of the show. Uh, new faces, new places, new everything. Possible cameos. Uh, I'll try and make some stuff work. Uh, one of my favorite parts ever, the canoe is in the movie. And also, for the first time in this channel's history, our first voice actor. One of my good friends is going to be portraying the role of Ice Cream, which I also mentioned in the community post, so go ahead and give that a look. I'm gonna, and yes, it's the same friend I saw Fall Out Boy with. I'm gonna leave a link to their channel in the description because I think they are incredibly talented. I am just, I am so lucky to be able to know them and have them as my friend. And this is not me just saying that for the video. I... Just, wow, they are an amazing artist, and I'm super happy I get to know them. But I don't want to leave you empty-handed just yet, so here are two QR codes you can scan that will take you to the first two posters for this movie. And also, you can officially see the official Ink Demon website if you go to thedemonsociety.card.co, where you can get a large amount of Easter eggs and even sign... Our that. guest, the 2023 season comes to an end. Thank you so much for watching me over the course of this silly little year that was actually not all that silly. It was very, very sad. So, um, thank you, I love you, and I'll see you in 2024. Good night. Fact 3, 010.